situation that was supposed to break you in half this year. That situation that the enemy thought that he had you. That situation where you lost your foot and you really failed. You missed the mark. But God. Think about that time and think about how you even thought about the situation. How you thought about that circumstance. How you thought about how you were going to come out of that thing. Because the way that you went in it, you didn't come out the same. The way that you thought about it, it didn't happen the way that you thought it was going to happen. I say that because where on New Year's Eve we will celebrate walking into a new year. But how about on the last Sunday of the year we celebrate that we had an opportunity to walk into his fellowship again. That we can celebrate the fact that he even got us to this place. I don't know about you. Last night, I, I in, in the midst of trying to organize this message, I've had it for a while. But the Lord sat back and said, I need you to look on your life. For real, for real. I ain't talking about your yay me moments. I need you to look at your life. I need you to look at 
how I rescued you. <laughs> how I snatched you from the jaws of death. How I lifted you up out of the depths of depression. How I sat by and put a little something in your pocket when you ain't had nothing but lint. And the lint owed you something. I need you to think about when they left you. And how lonely you felt. But in the midst of your loneliness, somehow, some way, you felt comfort. I need you to understand that even in the midst of life and death situations, death couldn't have you. I need you to understand that this is an opportunity to allow your joy to be on display. Again, all our lives we have seen the Dick Clark show and we did the countdown of all the beautiful songs of the year. And we prep ourselves going into the next year. But I want you to understand something today. It ain't been raining cats and dogs for no reason. The Lord literally said that guess what? When you get in the tub and you get cleansed. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody got to rinse and clean that thing out. Because all of that residue that was left behind is waiting on you. So I let the rain come like cats and dogs. I let the rain come like nobody's business. Because you won't walk into 2016 the way you got out that tub in 2015. Mm -hmm. I am washing away your anxiety. I'm washing away your worries. I'm washing away your cares. I'm washing away old corrupt desires. I'm washing away your mess. The Lord wants you to reflect in this moment so that you can give him glory, so you can give him praise, so that you can get out of the tub without the residue attaching to you. Because if you don't reflect on, you don't consider his goodness, mm -hmm. his mercy, mm -hmm. his power, yes, Lord. his love, his peace, his joy. Yeah. His faithfulness. Mm -hmm. If you don't even consider the fact that he ain't forceful. Yes. The Lord wants you to consider these things so that you can walk in something greater. So you can walk in more. So that in this upcoming year where he's saying embrace the shift, when the shift takes place, mm -hmm. you ain't panicking. All right. Mm -hmm. When the shift takes place, you know where to go first. See, Abraham, I'm, I'm just going to go there. I'm going to go there. We do it in Bible study a lot. That was one of the first Bible studies we had where we trace the places of Abraham. And everywhere Abraham went, he set up an altar. Those altars were normally wells. Amen. The first altar that he set up was the same one that the woman met Jesus at. Mm -hmm. That well still ain't ran dry. <laughs> 2016 years later, it's still flowing water. Yes. <laughs> the Lord is saying, before this season ends, before this year ends, dig your well. Because when you need something to refresh you, when you need something when you're thirsty, how about this? When you just need a place to pray. Mm. When you need a place to get away and, and, and just air your dirty laundry. 
He didn't say take it to the priest. He's not saying take it to your mama and your daddy and your sisters and your brothers or your partners now. Mm -hmm. He said come back to the well, the place in which you've set up as a resource for me. So in the midst of this praise and worship, I want you to begin to dig your well. And I prophesy to you today. The deeper you dig, the longer it's going to last. I want you to understand if you only dig your well three inches deep, it's going to dry up. If you only dig your well one foot deep, the dirt is going to swallow it up. Find Jesus in this moment and dig into him. Because you can't receive what he's about to pour into your well today if you don't allow still waters to run deep. Amen. That's all right, preacher.
what you've done. Because many have been stuck on what you've done. But I thank you right now for what you're doing.
Be free. Free from your perception. Free from your arguments. Free from your lust. Free from your mouth. Free from your past. Be free. The Lord says in the year 2016, you are free. You will be free because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You will be free. We declare freedom over the house. My God. We bind up every bondage. <coughs> Preconceived notion. Religious spirit. We bind those things right now in the name of Jesus. If you would, I'm going to be before you kind of brief today. Because real talk, I think we already heard what the Lord had to say today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Amen. Oh, thank you. If you dug your well, when you hit that spot, you heard what God had to say to you today. And because of that, there are a lot of opportunities that have now come into play. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. In being before you briefly, turn with me to James, the first chapter. James 1, we start at the 12th verse. I read from the NIV version. Say amen when you have it. Amen. under trial mm -hmm. because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life mm -hmm. that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I'll read that again. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. If I read that from the Message Bible, because, you know, we get tricked a little sometimes, because, you know, with um, the this, that, the thus, ye, therefore, henceforth, and forevermore, and all yeah, the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> I call the Message Bible my Negro version. Anyone who meets a testing challenge, head on, and manages to stick it out, is mighty fortunate. For such persons, loyally in love with God, the reward is life, and more life. What are you talking about there, buddy? Well, just to give you a, a backdrop of this. Because even in the midst of worship, the Lord changed the scripture. Hmm. 
The Lord sat by, and I'm just going to tell y'all flat out. I was sitting up last night. I'm at my desk. I'm trying to organize a sermon. I'm in worship. And I put a song on that I played for about six hours straight. And I'm just a crying and a snotting and a yelling and a screaming and a crying and a snotting. And I think I kept my kids up. That's why they still sleep. They should be coming down in a second because they can hear me anyway. But in the process of that, the song said, Jesus loves me. And the more I listened to it, the more I heard the voice of the Lord say, because I love you, there's a gift that you have that no one else can give. There's something locked up in you that's available to you. It's a resource that can't nothing in this world take from you. Your life. Well, what you mean? Somebody can run up in here and blow the house up right now. For those that know me, last two, three years I've had what, about six near-death experiences. Hit by an 18-wheeler and walked away without a scratch. In my lifetime, I hit a median on an overpass in Atlanta. And it broke. I was supposed to be flipped on the oncoming traffic. Didn't happen. I had a gun put in my mouth. I've had a few held in my head. And in the process of that, the Lord said, start reflecting on your life. Start reflecting on how you even view life. And when I began to think about what the Lord was saying, I started crying even harder because I didn't value life. I thought living was having my way. I thought living was having what I wanted when I wanted it. I thought living was looking good before men. Having as many women as I could possibly get my hands on. Living that, that dream with the wife and the kid, the 2.5 kids, as the book says it. Yo, two cars in the house and a nice job. So that you can keep your refrigerator full and you can buy all the electronic gadgets that you want. And you can go on vacation as much as you possibly want to because that's what they showed me. But then the Lord said, I want you to think about the time that you accepted my call. I'm sorry, y'all. If it seems like I'm not preaching to y'all, I'm really not. <laughs> this is my message again this week. So once I accepted my call, all hell broke loose. Because I no longer had an identity to conform to. I could no longer talk like I used to talk. I couldn't look at things how I used to look at them. I couldn't even like what I used to like. It didn't seem like living. But for some strange reason, the Lord would always tickle me about me. And this message was there, but it wasn't there until Christmas. I went to go see an old friend. And Friday I went hanging out with some other, I mean, uh, Thursday night, I hanging out with some other friends. And when they found out I was a pastor, they began to tell me every story about how horrible I used to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They began to run down every instance of 
what I used to look like. They told me about all the times that I really should have been dead. I'm sitting at this computer and I'm in worship and I really want to organize this message so I can go to bed, but the Lord wouldn't let me because he said, I need you to look at life. You get all of those things then to be happy. You did all of those things then to live. But once you begin to put your nose in this book for real, for real, once you gave me your heart for real, for real, I can show you that I love you. See, I was a big bad womanizer. I went everywhere and everything, doing everything to try and find love. Mm. To try and find acceptance. Mm -hmm. To try and find peace. Yeah, yeah. To try and find happiness. Come on, preacher. To make my world look like I had joy. Mm. I did everything in the world to dress myself like I had it. Come on now. <laughs> but the very joy that I had in me was empty. It was locked up. Mm. You said something. I want you to catch that because real talk, the name of this message is the Lord wants to unlock your joy. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go to that scripture then? <laughs> well, the secondary topic of this particular sermon is hold on. It's only training on how to tap into your joy. Amen. Amen. In order to find joy, you got to get into the presence of the Lord. Mm. Here's what's funny about this presence of the Lord, this joy that we're all in search of. You don't have to buy it. Amen. You don't have to bargain for it. Yeah. You don't need nobody else for it. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. You can't detach yourself from it. Hmm. Because it's in you. Yeah. It's the very gift of life. Go ahead, preacher. It's the very gift and the essence of life. Uh-huh. Well, here's the problem. If I ain't happy with my life, how can I have joy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Are you here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you breathing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you walk? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you talk? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you think? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you jump up and down? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have to crawl around? And even if you did, you can do it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Everybody got some Cheerios and some milk somewhere. If it ain't Cheerios, it's Captain Crunch or Frosted Flakes, Cocoa Puffs, whatever it may be. Wait a minute. You could have walked into a church that didn't have no heat. Didn't have no roof. You might not have a place to go home to. See, I want you to understand that Joy comes with thanksgiving. It comes with a push to say, you know what? I got to grab a hold of what I already got yes, yes. and stop tripping off of what I ain't got. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what I ain't got might not be for me. Say it, son, man. I got to hold on yeah. to what's inside of me. That's it. When he created us, he created us in his likeness and his image. Mm -hmm. That includes his authority and his spirit, his essence, mm -hmm. which is life because I serve yes. the living God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So many times, because I know that my Bible tells me that the wages of sin are death, mm -hmm. I cannot hold on to what I used to do Come on, to man. make me happy. Mm -hmm. All right, now. I can't hold on to 
Right. <laughs> right. What made me mad? Mm -hmm. Say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't hold on to what hurt my feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. Yes, yes, yes. I can't hold on to what they did to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Because if I'm holding on to that, that means I let go of me. Mm -hmm. I let go of everything, the essence of God in me. Amen. I cannot live life in life more abundantly because I don't want abundance. What I want is to put my hands on somebody. Mm. That's deep. I don't want more of God. What I want to do is tell them more about what I think of them. Mm. Watch out, man. I don't want more power and authority from God. What I really want to do, I want to get over them. Mm. <coughs> the Lord is speaking today about what you're holding on to. Mm -hmm. Because when you cross over, mm -hmm. if you're not holding his gifts, then whose gifts are you holding? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're not holding on to his memories, mm -hmm. then whose memories are you holding? Mm -hmm. If you're not holding on to his thoughts, yeah. whose thoughts are you holding? Mm -hmm. There are only two dimensions yeah. in his realm. So right. Uh, so either you hold on to something from heaven, hmm. which brings you more, or you hold on to something from hell that's gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. I ain't done with James because me and James, thank you Lord for letting me go there. But <laughs> my original scripture is actually out of James 1 and 2. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think that should help you get into this a little bit because we're going to break this scripture down in a different way, a little twist. It's a little twist. Look, look, look. <laughs> James 1 and 2 reads, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Whew. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I'm done. When I look at this scripture, James is a, he's a rough and tough type of guy. You know, he, he, he kind of, he tell it like a T.I. is. Straight to the point, kind of abrupt. You know, if you ain't really paying attention to James for real, you know, it, it might seem like he's going off on you a little bit. Well, the way that many preachers have preached this sermon, you know, they're going to tell you, be happy, be happy, be happy. No, that ain't the meaning of joy. Joy ain't happiness. Consider it pure joy. Some of your versions say them, consider it all joy when you enter into divers' temptations. Consider it all joy. Well, when I looked at this, I had to think to myself, he's trying to appeal to me. He's trying to tell me something, but he's really trying to get me to open my eyes to something. See, I had to go and look up some words again because, you know, we read through this and it's so quick and easy. And we didn't heard it so many times that somebody missed the fruit. Because a banana looked like a banana regardless of what kind of banana it is. An apple looked like an apple regardless of the apple. Problem being, they didn't pick this fruit, so let's pick it. To consider means to think carefully about. To think carefully about. So, think carefully about nothing but joy. 
<laughs> Think carefully about nothing but joy. It can also mean to think, believe, or suppose. Well, Jesus is in the room. <laughs> so when I, I plug this in, it says, I need you to think about nothing but joy. Believe in nothing but joy. And even when it don't look good, suppose it's joy. <laughs> Come on, we using the death. We don't use the dictionary now. Because see, the problem is, we'll miss the verb. We read the text, but we don't understand the action. The action says, I need to think carefully about it. I need to believe that it is. I need to suppose it is, even when it ain't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet another definition is to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So here's the funny. How can I spot joy if I ain't looking for it? Mm -hmm. How can I see God moving on me and in me and through me and even in my situation if I ain't looking for it because I'm holding on to what had happened was because <laughs> I'm holding on to the fact that they don't like me no more they think I'm a square because <laughs> I'm holding on to the old family tradition because, see, the old family tradition was everybody meet up and we do what we do how we do. And, you know, in the holiday time, somebody going to fight it. Some type of drama going to break out. Be looking for the drama instead of the joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During the holidays, I miss what I used to have. But it couldn't be that you're now in divers' temptations. Could it be now that you're going through the trial that's trying to get you to think about who brings you joy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to lose my job. Shut up. He might be giving you a new one. Yeah. <laughs> but because you're complaining and you're stuck in a place, you can't see you in a better place. Mm -hmm. You can only visualize yourself in the funk. Mm -hmm. Well, they left me, and they did this and this and this and this, and guess what? As long as you think about it, you're still there. You can't have no more because you stop looking on the inside of you to find him. Mm -hmm. Where you at, Jesus? Look in the mirror, clown. <laughs> Get on your knees and see if you don't see yourself. Get into worship and see if God won't show you you. And all of a sudden, I can't take joy in me because I don't like the way I look. Who can change you? Who has the authority to change you? Oops. So now you're mad. So now you suppose that you want to, at the beginning of the year, set you a list of things up to do to change you. Mm -hmm. Cosmetic stuff. Mm. That's normally all it ever is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some old cosmetic, something to make them like me more. Mm -hmm. Well, James 1 and 12 tells me that if I persevere with him, I get more life. Persevere means I gotta go through something. Mm -hmm. I gotta get past something. I gotta push through something. I gotta find something to hold on to when I can't move. Yes, yes. Well, the Lord says today, hold on to joy. Mm -hmm. Hold on to my presence. Yes. Hold on to that. Because in the midst of that presence, because God is forever moving, you will gain momentum. Mm. Consider. I'm still stuck on consider. I'm sorry. 
to gaze steadily or reflectively. So not only am I thinking about it, not only did I change my attitude about it, but now I'm looking intently for it. I want somebody to love me. Love yourself. Amen. Watch this. You begin to love yourself when you love him. Mm. Loving yourself ain't pampering you. Loving yourself ain't, I'm going to let everybody around me go that's negative. You still negative, so what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Like friends to try. If your house dirty, you gonna have roaches. Don't get mad when you look in the mirror and you look like a roach and somebody wanna step on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Consider it all joy. That means I have to be looking, thinking, feeling, observing and receiving joy. Hold on, but they told me that, you know, I just got to find a way to be happy when I'm going through stuff. Mm -hmm. That ain't what my Bible said. Right. Well, you just got to go through it then. Well, maybe they're telling you to go through it because they're trying to point you in the direction of joy. Get away from me and get into yourself so you can find your joy. Because you can't have mine. It's my own personal gift. It's the one thing that the Father's given me in life, in living. So when you run into that kill joy, that person that always want to talk bad about you, you know, they want to kind of like the kids say throwing shade on you. When I was young, they called it a sneak diss. You know, when you, you, you try to talk about somebody to their face, but it's really behind their back. That means they didn't find their joy. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to look for yours to take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's mine. You can't, and I'm not giving it to you. Mm -hmm. So if I consider it all joy, Mm. Then he says, my brothers and sisters, so that means that nobody's excluded. Yes. Whenever. Uh-oh. Ever. Ever. Ever means that it's describing some type of action, some type of time. Mm -hmm. Whenever. That means it ain't on your time. It's normally going, whenever means it's a surprise. You ever been on the phone with somebody and they be like, I'm going to come over. What time do you want me to be there? Whenever you get here. And if they show up at 2 in the morning, you might be mad because you expected them to have some sense enough to show up while the sun was up. But the Lord's telling you, that thing will come to you when you ain't expecting it. Mm -hmm. See, in school, the teacher would announce that they were going to give you a test. And you had time to study. And prepare yourself for the test. Well, every day that you get up and you're able to... That's your preparation time. Mm -hmm. Hold on to joy because this is your time to train. Training comes with obstacles. Training comes with resistance. Training comes to make you better. Well, I found joy in that situation, but I don't find it in this one. But you wonder why you keep running into this one and not that one. Because the Lord is training you how to look within you. Within you. So you can see him. The whole purpose of our creation was to get into the presence of God and worship him. Commune with him. 99.9% .9 of 
percent of the time you're doing something else but yet yeah, you're in search of joy even in the midst of God speaking to you you can't even stay you can't stay awake and then you wonder why you fall into depression you wonder why hell's fire feel like it's under your feet. It's because you keep walking in the hell. Let me shut up. Mm -hmm. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not going to go there today. Not going to go there Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you fall, another action word. It's another action word. It's another action word. See, what's funny is when you fall into diverse temptations, when you fall into various trials, that didn't mean I walked into it. That mean I did something to trip. I made a mistake. I made a bad choice, a bad decision, a bad perception, a bad heart condition, a bad attitude. Mm. Which tripped me up. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going through something. God don't teach you. God ain't going to put you in a place that you can't get through. But the difference is, he ain't going to force you out of that place either. Mm. So when you fall, what's going to pick you up? When my emotions is kicking my tail. And I want to do some furniture moving with somebody. Mm. The only thing that's going to appeal to my reason is the presence of God. Because if I talk to somebody else, they ain't going to do nothing but throw gasoline on the fire. Oh, well, you supposed to go to wise counsel. Well, who's the wisest of the wise? Jesus. He said it. Well, you're supposed to consult your elders. Well, who's the eldest of the eldest? Jesus. Hmm. Because if I'm not mistaken, it said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and mm. Jesus is the Word. So he was there in the beginning of time when the plan was being unfolded, when the plan was being written, when the yeah. plan was being executed. Yeah. So why am I going to somebody that don't have a plan? Mm. And you wonder why you ain't got no joy. Mm. What they gonna give you? They joy? Mm. Well, they source is the same as yours. So why in the world are you trying to tap into theirs and steal what they got? Withdraw from their account. Give me your bank account number so I can go make a withdrawal. You gonna tell me hell no. <laughs> so why are you trying to tap into my joy? <laughs> Get up off my feet. Get up off my back. Get on your knees. Open your eyes. Change your mind. Yes, yes, yes. You want to be free. But the only one keeping you bound right now is you. Because they didn't push you and you fail. It just said whenever you fall. The devil's going to come and he's going to offer you what you want. Holy Spirit's going to tell you, no, it's not good for you. No, you shouldn't do that. That's volatile. That's a ticking time I'm waiting to happen. I'm going to do it. What you going to do? You just grabbed a hold of something. I want to say what I want to say. I want to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. You just grab something. I want them to accept me, so I'm going to lie about it. To make it seem like I'm somebody that I ain't. Because I don't like me. So I'm going to hold on to the negative image instead of holding on to the image of Christ. Because he's there. 
The problem being, you done filled up with so much other bull that he can't fit now. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my statement a little bit. I told you, I'm preaching to myself. I ain't preaching to y'all. But if it do hurt, don't say ouch, just Jesus. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Okay? Because I ain't no different than nobody else in this room. Because a lot of times, the bills will come, and I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't like to spend money. And when they come, my whole attitude change. <laughs> Kids get to talking about daddy, such and such ripped and such and such broke, and I need, I get attitude. What you mean I gotta go to the store? You better put some duct tape on No, I'm all right. <laughs> Daddy, I can't put no duct tape on my pants. How you rip your pants? Oh no, Daddy, I grew. Shrink! I'm sorry, that's side angle. <laughs> side angle. So, oh, Jesus. I ain't no different than y'all. I got my issues just like you got your issues. Mm -hmm. I gotta go dig my well to pull from, just like you gotta go dig your well. Mm -hmm. The bad part about it is, I got more people pulling from my well than y'all do. My well turned into community wells. So I had to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So it's even more work. And the bad part about it is, I'm beginning to like it. Because I'm starting to find joy in it. Because mm -hmm. I don't mind if I have to go fall in a well. Because that just means I got bathed in living water. I don't mind having to do the work for the one that's supplying my need. Yes. I don't mind having to give up a little something extra so that <laughs> others can have more. Because I know who blesses me. I know where my provision is coming from. Problem is, when you consider something, there's a time frame involved in that. See, we make considerations and a lot of times we quick decision. All right, I'm done. Put your food in the microwave one minute, I thought about it, all right, ding, let's go. But if you're really considering the Lord, this is a process. Mm. This is time consuming. Yes, yes. See, when you persevere with him, you're going through a trial of time. He said, if you persevere with me, I will give you life. Well, wait a minute. I'm living. And then he says more life. That means I had to give up something. My life. My life as I know it. My life as it was given to me. My situations as they were placed before me, I got to give them up. Because as long as I'm trying to live a life, walking up a hill with no shoes on because my, my, my shoes is peace. I ain't got no armor on because I can't afford it. Because I just bought all this other food and other stuff I ain't no business buying trying to keep up with that life. So now I'm naked and exposed to the world. I'm in the middle of a trial. And because of, I'm walking uphill, I'm literally on hands and knees because this is too steep for me to get over. It's too steep to see the incline or the decline. Because I'm on this incline stuck and I'm just a chugging and a chugging. And a chug, and I'm getting tired of it. I'm tired of the way they look at me. I'm tired of having to deal with they mess. I'm tired of not having no money. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I'm tired of having to go to work every day. I'm tired of having to pray for people. I'm tired of having to listen to that mess. You are now in a trial. And when you become tired and weary, you will fall.
But Paul's instruction is to think it, to believe it. And even on the incline, I'm going to suppose that this is joy, even though it don't feel like it. When I'm tired of it, I'm going to suppose that it's joy, even though I don't like it. When I didn't fail and I didn't got dirty and I and feel like I'm hurting, oh, I got a boo boo. I still got to suppose that it's joy. But in the midst of my considering, even after I've fallen, I have to see the promise at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Huh? But I can't feel no promise. You take. You a couple hours late. You a couple generations late. I can't see the end. Well, that's part of the trial. The OJ trial went for how many months? <laughs> Before they could pass judgment. Well, watch this. When you fail, you pass judgment. And you weren't the judge. Because the decision that you made to judge needs to make a decision. The decision that you made wasn't under the authority of the kingdom of heaven. That's how you fail. They can't judge me. You did it yourself. Shut up. That's why they look at you like that. Because you do. Consider it all joy. I'm sorry. If this one hurt, get over it. So now, when I deal with the whenever and you fall into the various trials, the Lord says, no, I need you to go back. Because I think you missed something there. Because what is this joy that you're talking about? Well, I went to Mo Vines. And joy is a state of mind. Wait a minute. A state of mind. Not an emotion. It's the way you think. And an orientation of your heart. Mm. So it's part of who you are. Yes. It's a state of mind. Well, my mind can change, but your heart can't. What he planted in your heart is there. What you planted in your heart is really there. The only one that can uproot it is the one that created the heart. Well, if he created the heart and he put it in your heart, is it ever going to leave you? You just got to find it. Oh, how do I find it? Change your mind. Watch this. It's a settled state of contentment. Jesus said it's finished. That means he settled the matter, correct? Mm -hmm. But if Jesus didn't have no joy, we'd all be non-existent. So he had to have some joy to carry that cross. Mm -hmm. He had to have some joy to take them lashes. Yes, yes, yes. He had to have some joy to drink pee water. Yes. Uh, uh, he had to have some joy to allow them to keep sticking inside because he didn't have to deal with all, none of that. Mm -hmm. But if you're conformed to his image, how much more can you now take? Mm -hmm. Greater than these shall you do in my name. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Strength is nothing more than a synonym of perseverance. So joy being a settled state of contentment. Watch this. Confidence and hope. Mm. Wait a minute. It's settled. I'm sure that it's settled because I'm assured of it. Mm -hmm. Because I supposed it to be so. Or uh, my hope is that I'm still looking for greater. So Joy says, guess what? 
before it even go down, I'm good. But even in the midst of going through it, I'm still good. Yeah, yes. But after I come out of this thing, I'm better. Mm. Wait a minute, that's a state of mind. Kind of sound like prophecy. Yesterday, today, and forever, that's kind of how prophecy hits. Prophecy will touch you from then, mm -hmm. it's going to relate to your now, mm -hmm. and it's going to touch your future. Mm -hmm. Oh, so is confidence. So is joy. So is hope. Mm. Amen. All because you made up your mind that it's settled. Why is it settled? Ladies and gentlemen, if he did this, his blood poured. He rose from the dead. It's settled. And ain't nothing no demon in hell can do about it. So why are you weary? Why are you complaining? Why are you afraid? Why don't you want to go through? It's settled. Joy. Hmm. And then finally, it's something that provides a source of happiness. <laughs> so, if that's the case, <clears throat> if you're struggling with your joy today, I'm still in a chapter with James in the first chapter, if I'm not mistaken, in the seventh verse. He who lacks wisdom, I ask. Lord, if I don't know how to find joy in me, what am I to do? You have not because you ask not. And then when you do ask, you don't want the answer. I'm sorry. Am I on you? Am I on your feelings? It'd be alright. It's raining. It'll wash away. <laughs> <laughs> Look further gave an explanation and said if we can't find reasons to be joyful, our perspective must change. Mm -hmm. Perspective is nothing more than how you look at something. Mm -hmm. It's how you consider the situation. The trial. Your decision. Your past. Your present. And your future. Because here's the issue. If you can't find joy, you can't move forward. Mm. My God. You're nothing more than a nomad running around in the wilderness crying out, Lord, help me. But as we studied the wilderness, the wilderness was where people were sent when they were criminals. They were outcasts. They were no good to society. You banished yourself to a wilderness. Because you didn't want to see yourself in a different light. <sighs> so I go to verse 3. Be assured. Be assured. Be assured. Be confident. Be hopeful. Wait a minute. And no. Assured means no. That it's settled. And it's nothing more than the testing of your faith. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Your faith in what? That he's your source? Oh, wait. We, we ain't talking about. No. Lord, I'm praying that you're going to give me this huge church and I need that million dollar job and y'all you know. We're talking about a basic understanding of your relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you know who you know. This is nothing more than a testing of do you really know him? Mm. Or 
do you not know him like that? Do you really love him? Or I can't love you like that. The testing of your faith is nothing more than the testing of your relationship with the Father. Mm. Well, let's see. For the people in the room that want to get married, men and women, you in a relationship mm -hmm. and you don't spend no time. That man or woman gonna leave you. Amen. How about this one? You're in a relationship and you're trying to go through something with them, but you don't know them like that. <laughs> Children, put your hands, put your hands over here. Love you. When I do like this, you put them down. You making love to your significant other. But in the middle of love making, they fall asleep. <laughs> How you gonna feel about that? How many times have you fell asleep on the love of God? Mm. 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 How you think that made him feel? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God. Mm. Help us, Lord. Y'all in the middle of intimacy. Mm -hmm. mm. mm. Drool coming down. Mm. But guess what? He trying to love on you. You want the love. You want the respect. You want the trust. But you fell asleep on him. Mm -hmm. You sitting there with your mouth wide open trying to get some rest. But he's trying to give you everything that you wanted. Everything you've been asking for. Mm. You're in the middle of a testing of your faith. A testing of how you really feel about him. Because if somebody did that to you, you won't see them no more. Mm. You're going to cut them off. Everybody thank God that he ain't cut us off. Thank Lord. <laughs> I thank God that he ain't like me. Because right. mm -hmm. I shut you down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wake you up, probably dump water on you until you get out. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the way we deal with things. In the middle of a trial, the Lord is trying to tell us something. He's trying to woo us into something. He's trying to change our minds, comfort us, be intimate with us. But in the middle of that trial, because we don't have an assurance of the relationship we have with him. Because we don't really know how we feel about him. We were taught to say we love him. We said we loved him because everybody else said it. Mm. We said it because Whitney Houston sung it. <clears throat> but when the fan hit the flame, when the fire get a little hot, do you really love me? Y'all remember a sermon around Easter time. I preached about Peter. And the Lord came back after resurrection. Visited Peter three times. But the final time at the Sea of Galilee, he asked Peter, hmm, wait a minute, let, let, let me stop. He called Peter Simon because Simon was acting like his old self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simon had lost his joy. Mm -hmm. Simon, do you love me? <laughs> yeah, I love you, Lord. No. Simon, do you really love me? I love you, Lord. Okay, I'm beginning to see your joy come back because you're in my presence. 
so now I can call you who you really are. Peter, do you love me? Oh, Jesus. Let's think about that thing. In the presence of the Lord, your joy has to be restored. So if you're empty, go to the well. If you're not assured that you have that type of relationship with him, that you built that well because somebody told you to, you ain't going to go there. If you have that type of confidence, that hope, and that settling in your spirit, it's the first place you go. Because when your faith get tested, guess what? If I got faith in something, I'm going to go to it over and over and over and over and over again. And sometimes when it don't work, I might try my own way, but I'm going to eventually go back to the way I know. That's how tradition gets set up. Play a certain song, and because it went up in the church, they'll play it over and over and over until they wear it out. Mm -hmm. Try and wear out my Jesus and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Billions of people on the earth, and they can't do it, and ain't been able to do it, so what makes you think you will? Keep going to the well. I'm sorry, I'm on one. I'm going to shut up here. You're going to wind this one up. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience, through experience, not your average, I'm going to declare and declare, I'm going to believe and receive message. You're going to go through it. You want to believe it, you want to receive it, you got to get your hands dirty. But this produces endurance. Wait a minute. Produces endurance? I'm exercising. I'm a runner. I run every day. And I got to challenge myself a little more every day mm -hmm. to get better. Because the Lord wants you to get better. He's going to challenge you a little bit more every day. When we talk about the devil doing this, the Lord is doing this. <laughs> And it's only from a decision, a judgment that you made on yourself. And that's what it stems from. So now that you made this judgment, the Lord will say, hmm, you love me, huh? See, by the door, they don't come home. That doorbell ring, they ain't, it ain't even going to finish with the ding and the dong before I got it open. I'm waiting on you. This is the Lord. He's sitting at the door waiting on you to come back home. See, a lot of times we sit back and say, well, he's always with me. He, he is. But when you go where you want to go, the first opportunity, the first section of that in order to build your endurance, he's going to wait on you. Because you want to go do your running. So he's going to let you go run around in your mess for a while. Until you're ready to come home. It produces endurance. And this endurance leads to spiritual maturity. Hmm. I mean, you're going to go through, you're going to mess up. He expects you to mess up. He expects you to mess up, but then learn from it. He expects you to get stronger from the hell that you put yourself in. He will deliver you from that hell only for you to get better. But if you don't want no more, he ain't gonna give it to you. Because that's the limit of the relationship that you've allowed. See, when you take a test, you get A's, you get B's, you get C's, you get B's, you get F's, right? Well, in the spiritual realm, this is what you get the whole blessing, a piece of the blessing, 
and another blessing. Depends on your relationship. Lord, deliver me from this trial. I'm looking at what I'm going through. It's no longer them. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And because I consider where I lack. I can be honest enough with you because I got a relationship to tell you my junk on a whole nother level that can't nobody else understand. I can be happy to give you my funky stuff because I know that it's priceless to you. It's like rubies and gold to you even though it's crap to everybody else. Because I have this relationship with you, I'm willing to give a spiritual transaction of what you can't stand for what you want to get me to. And I know I gotta work a little harder now. Because that's part of this experience. That's part of this experience. But you gotta understand. An experience can be good or it can be bad. Correct? If that mate fell asleep on you, it's a bad experience, right? But when you fall, it's a choice. They had to struggle to stay up, but it was still a choice. When you fall away from God, you fall away from that relationship, it's a choice. And it's an experience to bring you into maturity. The key is, Kind of like teenagers today. They want to grow up too fast. We do the same thing. We do the same things. Never taking the time out to sit back and get nurtured by the Father. Never having the ability to submit under the one who has the greatest authority. And take the correction. Never allowing him to be sole provider of us. This is the test of your faith. The same way mama and daddy get it, God wants to have that same role. But he wants it in greater capacity. But the way we've looked at the Bible, we looked at what God has said, it hasn't been joyful. It's been a bunch of rules. I can't do this. I can't do that. He always telling me I'm wrong. I can't never be right. I'm tired of being what everybody say that I'm wrong about. I want to be right for a change. I want to feel good about something for a change. Well, if that's your desire, fix it. You now have a choice in the matter. But you have to unlock your heart to understand that if I'm changing in, boy, if you don't be yelling at me. <laughs> if I'm changing in his image, I'm sticking with it. I'm not changing for the day to get what I want tomorrow. I'm changing because I want to walk with him forevermore. Yes. I want to be his bride. Yes. yes. Hmm. Produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Uh oh, we did a sermon on peace. Mm -hmm. You see how Lord, uh, everything in the Bible always go full circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we established in the Word that peace is order. So spiritual maturity is order within you. Getting your mind in order. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. When you are walking in joy, your mind and your heart are in order because you know that he settled it. My confidence is in him. My hope is in him. Yes. So for whatever the temptation, for whatever the trial, for whatever God's allowing me to experience, I don't mind 
like being in it because at least if I'm in it, I'm in order. My house can be a dump, but if it's clean, I'm happy there. Yes, yes, yes. My car could be a hoopty. Tailpipe dragon. Really? <laughs> he don't work with the girl keep nagging. Not here, man. Quit quiet. Quit quiet. You hear me? It can be that. But if it's ready, I can be happy. My back and my knee, and my knee and my back can hurt. But if I'm walking, I can be happy. Because it's settled that if indeed I persevere with him, healing is available to me. They treat me like crap, but I'm only nice to them. When they doing it, you can be happy because if you walk in with him, he will lead you, he will guide you, he will protect you. And though they words might it won't prosper. It won't prosper. Why am I saying all these things? Because if you in, if you let this challenge, this endurance, <laughs> have this perfect work. And all I'm going to say to you is this. I'm going to define, I went and looked them up, but let is a word that got me because it was yet another verb. But endurance means a continued Christian commitment to face difficulty. The ability to do something difficult wait a minute, for a long time. The ability to deal with pain and suffering for a long time. So for whatever you're enduring, you really don't want to do it. The perfect work. Let endurance have its perfect work. Endurance, we only do it so that we can achieve an outcome cornerly. Which goes back to a want to. Right? But the instruction is let. I want to look like Christ. I want to have the things of Christ. I want to be blessed by Christ. But Paul, I'm sorry, James is sitting back and he's saying, you got to let it happen. You got to have a willingness. Wait a minute. Want to, willing. Want to, willing. I want to, but I ain't willing. Mm. Mm. I want to have joy, but I ain't willing to go through nothing to keep it. Not I want to be blessed. I want to have money. I want a better image. I want to see myself better. But I'm not willing to do anything to buy it. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I've been doing verbs, action words. Because we've been doing a whole lot of talking in the church, but we ain't doing nothing. Well, 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 well. Mm. Everybody got something to say about what they doing, but you ain't doing nothing to help them. Everybody wants to be a victim, but not willing to be a victor. The endurance is teaching you how to win. When I played ball, the coach would always tell me, you got to learn how to lose in order to understand how to win. No, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. I'm not willing to lose. 
How about this one? When the fight is fixed, why in the hell am I sitting back worried about losing? I'm in a fixed fight. I know I win. But I'm still stuck on want to instead of being willing. I want to win. I want to. I want No, you have it. Unlock it. Change your mind. Let it be settled in your hearts today. Stop hoping for what you want and start hoping for what you're willing to do. Have some confidence in your willing instead of doubting it. Lord, I want to pray for him. Pray in! Lord, I want to help them. Help them! But make sure you hear from them because if you fall, now he's going to sit back and he's going to test your relationship about how much you love me. Because mm. see, you might have helped them and your want to might have been a little corrupt. It might have been on the side of, I want them to see me. But if you know he's in you, you let him step out front. And if it's really in him, you ain't going to get hit. But I promise you, if it's you, dang! Why he hit me? Ain't that what your mama did when you stepped out of line? Get in the grocery store line and start asking for stuff you ain't got no business asking for. Shut up! <laughs> this is what happens in the spirit. Because that whooping that you caught, that embarrassment in public that you caught, it kept you from doing it again. Mm -hmm. It was the correction to bring you into maturity. Amen. Amen. How many times I gotta get hit? How many places I gotta get hit? I got hit a lot. I, I, I just didn't want to grow up. Mm -hmm. Hush, mama. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole key here. You want joy? Joy is going to mature you. Joy is going to keep you. Joy is going to align you. So in this shift in 2016, when you got, it seemed like everything is sinking sand. Mm. Uh, mm. When you start running into these challenges in 2016 that you ain't never seen or heard of before. When you start seeing things that are there to distract you instead of keep you. Don't get shook. Because you got to consider it all joy. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you today because you have moved in this place. Yes, Lord. You have brought forth a very hearty word. And we just bless you because you are going to equip us to use this word. We thank you for the training. Yes. We thank you for the execution of your word today. Yes, we thank you for the keys to unlock our hearts so that we can dwell in joy. Yes. Father, we thank you for the saturation of your joy. Father, we just thank you right now that you keep dipping us in joy. Yeah. Father, we just thank you right now for allowing us and forgiving us for refusing your joy. Yes. Father, we just pray right now that you and your Holy Spirit come on in and stamp this thing on our hearts again. Yes. Father, we rededicate ourselves to you on this day. As we attempt to cross over into a greater place, into a greater thing, and into more of life. So, Father, we bless you for more of life today. We bless you in the rededication and even in the dedication of our minds. Father, massage our heads right now. For every big-headed child that thought it could come against you, Father, I pray right now that you bring the correction and you bring it swiftly. Yes. I'm sorry you don't like it. Lord, we know that you are Father and ruler of all things. So you have access. We give you permission. Yes, God. Yes, God. For your word says, let endurance have its perfect work. Yes, Lord. So we let you have your perfect work. 
Yes, Lord. Oh, ancient of days, have your perfect work in us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We release the very things we've been holding on to that have hindered us from grasping joy. Yes, Lord. We release those things right now. Our hands are tired. So, yes, Father, we just God. release them right now. We open our hands and let those things fall. At your feet. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you for that spiritual transaction today, oh Father. Yes, we make that in the spirit right now. We lay it on your altar. Whatever it may be that we've been grabbing, Father, we lay it at the altar right now. Yes, and we stop praying to it and for it. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. And we grab what is settled. We grab a hold to a promise. We grab a hold to an action greater than any other action that's taken place in history. We grab hold of what you settled on the cross. Mm. We just pray these things today in Jesus' name. In Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Were there any questions? And don't let this moment pass you by because you thought that it might make you look stupid. There none? Okay. I will see you all on next week. Sunday.